What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome to some more squad building challenge upgrades on the road to glory. Thank you guys for the amazing support this week. YouTube's been a bit busted this week with videos not hitting sub boxes, not tweeting out properly. The internet was, uh, was DDoSed um, on Friday which caused some people some problems. Um, but here we are, and today we're going to be uh, we're going to be taking on some squad builder challenges. The reason why I mention that, by the way, is because uh, with all of those problems, you guys still showed insane support and and turned up in your tens of thousands, which is amazing. Look all this, this look at this. It's, it's dirt, man. It's, the problems of being a, a you know a parent, you just get your kids crap all. No, not, I don't mean like actual crap. You just get crap all over you. Now, few things to know. F th thing number one, I am getting a bit ill. I have taken some Beecham's and stuff, but if I do this and basically like snort my own phlegm a couple of times through the video, I apologize. When I watch other people stream or, or are in videos and they're ill and they do that, it honestly, it sickens me. So me doing it is gonna obviously turn some people's stomach. I apologize if I do, I will do my best not to. I have got, as I anticipate this will be quite a long video, I've got a nice big glass of water here to keep my, uh, to keep my palette very nice and uh, moist, mo 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 moist, just moist, just a moist palette, just a moist palette. Um, on top of that, I have picked some uh, some questions or some comments rather from the reading your comments video. I had a feeling it would incite more people to talk in the comment section, and I'm happy for that because it gives me inspiration on what to talk about on videos and especially this kind of video. Now, um, I've got, you'll see in the club, 452 players. Last time I did this, about about a week ago, I <laughs> didn't want to say it, about a week ago I did this, and it took us an hour to trade our bronzes to silvers, silvers to golds, and then we ended up with two gold player packs. Um, on this occasion, I've already done the bronze to silvers because I had like 1,200 players. I ended up with 76 silver packs. Uh, there was only three duplicate players. I didn't get anyone of no. I didn't get any informer. I didn't get the one silver screamer. And more importantly, I didn't get. Ne I got nearly no Liga Nos or MLS silvers, which is actually a good thing because it means we can put them all into the silver to gold upgrade. We'll then open the gold ones, put the golds into the gold upgrade, and open the premium gold ones and get the two players. Now. My club has got a lot of crap in it uh, right now, and I'm like I'm at that point in FIFA where I'm like I don't want to say scared because that's sad. This is a video game, you know. Like you shouldn't be scared to do anything, but um I don't want to give up expensive players by mistake. So with that in mind, a lot of the players that I have um, could be worth something but also could be worth nothing. Uh, All Black, by the way, I'm going to sell because we've actually got Kalor Navas um, in net. So regardless of what we, ha what goes on, um, we, we will want to get rid of all black. I'm going to wait until Saturday to sell him though, because he will be worth hopefully a little bit more on Saturday. Um, other than that, you know, we've got some players that are in our team, some players that aren't. Pedro isn't, Everett isn't, Albiol isn't, Kaka isn't, Wilshire isn't, um, you know, Sewell there. This guy, he probably doesn't even sell. He discards for more than you would actually sell him for. Because if you sold him for 650, you'd lose 33 coins on tax. You'd get back 617. Whereas if you discarded him, you'd get back 648. You actually make more money by discarding this guy than you do by selling him. So, you know, we could actually use him in a squad builder challenge, like the upgrade one. Or we could quick sell him for 700 coins or 650 coins. Or we could wait until he actually fits into a more relevant squad builder challenge. Um, I've also got an unbelievable amount of silver players that are tradable uh, I just want to show you like the first sort of a uh, whole bunch of pages here um, we've got all of these guys are tradable that we've got in packs along the way or that I bought for squad building challenges I actually think I bought this guy I did a boy for a thousand coins watch him be worth like 300 coins or something now if he's worth even more I'll sell him okay he looks like he's worth about bang on the same amount of money as well boy for oh yeah no there we go 600 coins brilliant Love losing money on players, just absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, so that's where we're at. Like, I've got a whole bunch of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trade all of the untradeable silvers. I'm not going to touch the tradable silvers. Um, I'm only going to get rid of the untradable silvers into golds and then the golds and untradable golds into the higher rated golds and hopefully we go on from there. So it starts from this guy. I'm not going to get rid of any of the Liga Nos players. 
or the M well actually the MLS players now I can get rid of because I've done the Giovinco squad building challenge so uh, there's no need to do that again now again guys this is going to end up being a long video it is only going to be squad building challenges and the packs that we open from the squad building challenges uh, hopefully we can uh, get some rewards to be able to complete the uh, spooky in the center rip on the right and madness in the middle SBCs they're only there for 13 days these might be cards that we end up missing out on which will be sad but I'm going to do my best to get these cards um, even if it means downgrading my team to a super basic team sacrificing position in for champions and buying the necessary players with the coins that we've got spare then that's what I'll do but I do want to try my best to get them especially this Mario Gaspar card looks crazy good position change from a right back to a center back with an upgrade that with an anchor card he would just be unreal I would prefer him because he fits into my team more than I would prefer Douglas Costa or Payet. More importantly, I, if I were to miss out on any of them, it would be Douglas Costa because his spooky card, his uh, what they call Screamer, his Screamer card is an 85 rated with these identical stats. It's just on the left mid instead of the right mid. So you can have this exact version of uh, Costa just as a left midfielder. So for me, that would be one that I would be like, okay, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd happily miss out on that one. But without further ado, guys, let's get into our silver squad building challenge and let's take the first comment that I picked up. And the first comment was from Lee Ham. And I wonder if he's called Lee Ham because that's Liam, like Liam. And I wonder if his name's just Liam. So there's that. He says, Nep, why don't you play career mode? By the way, I love the series. Well, I tried playing career mode a few times, my dude, but ultimately I hate playing against AI, which speaks volumes for how... Ooh, are these all untradeable? Are these, all... these are all untradeable. Should I use the BPL ones? I never know. Because what if a squad building challenge for a player of the month comes up and you need like six Bournemouth players? We'll, we'll 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 keep the BPL. We'll keep the BPL. Um, but yeah, basically, he's tradable, but screw it. We're going to use him anyway. Basically, um, where are we at? We're here. Um, I, I hate playing against offline. So when I do play offline, specifically on the road to glory, because I don't really touch it outside of the road to glory, know that I am putting myself through utter, utter boredom for your guys' benefits, because I cannot tell you how... Just how much I absolutely hate playing against the AI. I find it unbelievably boring. I feel like it's absolutely scripted to the max. I feel like the AI, if even on like the low levels on semi-pro and such, if they want to score, they will score, and there is nothing you can do about it. And and I, I just I find that sort of stuff to be a little bit of uh, a little bit of shit. Really, apologies for swearing. I think these players are tradable, but you know what? Let's get rid of the tradables as well. Let's just go and get as many of these gold packs as we possibly can. Um, for, for as for as quick as we possibly can and uh, we'll go from there really um, so that's why I don't play career mode I just hate playing against AI I love the competitive competitive aspect of FIFA and um, you only really get that true competitive edge when you're playing against uh, humans rather than against the computer so that's why I uh, I play just uh, this so and he also says by the way love the series so thank you thank thank you Thank you very much. Uh, T7, T7 says, Nep, if I ever want to watch Mane, or is it Mane? I, 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 I I'm, I'm going to butcher names 24-7, so we'll just, we'll, we'll just, as long as you understand roughly who I'm talking about, we should be all right. All right? All right. Good. Glad we got that covered. Um, he says, he says, he says, if I've got, if I have one to watch Mane and he gets a player of the month, will the one to watch card go up? Uh, hold on, let me just sort this team out real quick, and then uh, then I will help you. Um, will the one to watch car go up? I ask this because player of the month do not show up in the concept player list. So, to the best of my knowledge, the one to watch cards will only ever assume the stats of inform cards. It will never take the stats of any other style of special card, be it screamer. Uh, Player of the month, squad building challenge, team of the season, team of the year, man of the match, international man of the match, hero cards. It will never take those stats. It will only ever take the stats of the one to watch, sorry, of the informs of the specific one to watch. So uh, keep that in mind when you buy your one to watch cards because I feel like it's important and I feel like it's an area that a lot of people aren't really clear on. And that's, that's mainly EA's fault for not being clear in their explanations of, of how it all works. 
But ultimately, to, to answer your question is no. His stats won't go up from a one to watch to a player of the month. So uh, don't bank on that. Um, we get a message from that guy. He says, do your forwards that you play out of place get 10 chem? No, they do not. My forwards that I play, are we going to be able to get 100 chemistry here? There goes the alarm. Ring it. Ooh, we might be able to. Ringing in my head. Boom, that's 49. Then we swap those over. Bang, lovely. Um, no, my, my two forwards get seven chem maximum, dude, which still actually gives a chemistry boost. The way chemistry works this year, and this this question actually inspired a, a long string of chemistry questions, which we've got to look forward to. I know as well I took out that Calcio A player, didn't I? Yeah, I took him out by mistake. That was my bad. Um, <clears throat> ultimately, um, they only get seven chem, but they still get a boost on base stats. Now, I'm going to explain this as briefly as possible and as quickly as possible, because otherwise this whole video will just be me talking about chemistry again. Uh, it won't be the first video that I've ever done it in. It probably won't be the last video that I've ever done it in. But um, this is the way chemistry works. You, you get in-game chemistry points based on a combination of team chemistry and individual player chemistry. Individual player chemistry is 25... Well, I suppose it's... Yes, yeah, it's 25% of the player's individual chemistry. Am I right at that? No, that's team chem. Let me start again. The way that the chemistry works, because I've, I've, I'm trying to do like three things at once, it's getting confusing. The way the chemistry works is it's it takes 2.5%, 25%, yeah, because it's 2.5% times 10, isn't it? I don't know why they do that. The way they explain it is 2.5% times 10, that's 25%. You get 25% of your overall team chemistry um, which goes towards your in-game chemistry as like an invisible stat, right? So if you've got 100 team chemistry, every single player in that team will get 25 in-game chemistry points, right? Every player, regardless of what their individual chemistry is on, they will get 25 in-game chem points on 100 uh, team chemistry. So if you only have 80 team chemistry, they will get, instead of 25, they will get 20 uh, chemistry points. I've got a video explaining all of this, but I'll explain it again, as I said. Um... So with that in mind, the difference between, say, 100 team chem and 80 team chem isn't actually that great. It's only five in-game in five chemistry points, which doesn't really pay much attention to the overall impact that the chemistry makes. Uh, the player's individual chemistry is 75% um, of their values. So, so for example, if your player has 10 chemistry... 10 individual chemistry, he will get 75% of that 10 to the value of 10. So basically every one individual point is worth 10 times that amount for ins in game. So if you have 10 individual, basically you times that by 10, then you take 75% of that number. So if you have someone on 10 chemistry in a 100 chem team, they will get 25 chemistry from their team chemistry and they will get 75 chemistry from their personal chemistry, they will then get 100 in-game chemistry points. The card the card value, the card stats, like for this guy here, Aguza, what you see on his card, 60 pace, 63 shots, 69 pass, 65 dribbling, 53 defending, 62 physical. 50 in-game chemistry points are that, are what he gets on the screen there. Uh, above 50 is when he starts getting boosts, and then, of course, you can form those boosts even more kind of directly by using chemistry styles. So when you use someone on seven chemistry in a 100 chem team, which is exactly what I have, you still get from them, um, For again, in, in the in the instance of me, for example, uh, Hyung Min Son is in a 100 chem team, um, which means he gets 25 in-game chemistry points from the team and he's got seven personal chemistry, which means he gets 75% seven, of 70. Now, 75% of 70 is like 50-something, right? We'll just say 50-something, plus the, the 25 that he gets off the uh, game. He's going to get about 75 to 80 in-game chemistry points, which means he's still going to get a boost on his card stats, and that boost is going to be coupled with whatever chem style I give to him um, whenever I would give it to him. So, bottom line is, is the, the, to, to answer the question, which was a very simple question that required a very simple answer. Um, do my uh, do my players that I play out of chem, out of position, get 10 chem? 
No, they don't. That was all you required as an answer, really, wasn't it? And that's me rambling on as per usual. Uh, the next comment is, uh, what do you think about chemistry this year? Is it 100% necessary? That's from Lynx Blades. And uh, yes, I, I believe chemistry is unbelievably vital this year. Um, I would go as far as saying uh, it's more important this year, specifically coupled with chem styles, than it ever has been before. Um, I, I think in previous years, because there was the chemistry glitch where no non-day one cards weren't even affected by chemistry i believe in previous years there was an argument to be made that chemistry just wasn't even important this year however i think chemistry has an unbelievable factor in how the game works i think it can give you an edge if you have the correct chemistry styles um i i, be I believe uh basically i believe um that it, it can be the difference between you winning and losing against somebody who doesn't care about, know about, or understand how to use chemistry. Um, so yes, I, I believe chemistry is 100% necessary. That's not to say that 100 chemistry is necessary, it, but I would say that, um, let me go and find this right midfield spot. I would say that, uh, what would I say? I would say that at least seven individual chem and 80 team chem is about the minimum you should ever be aiming for. I would never go lower than that because at that point your stat boost is so minimal to each player that if your opponent has even got a, a lesser team than you but with better chem they could be having a better, you know, they could have better individual in-game stats because of that. So ultimately, yes, chemistry is 100% necessary in my opinion. Now, we, we've got through a lot of these silver packs. We're going to have a couple of really good uh, packs to open at the end of this. I can feel it. Um, the next question. Now, I left two centre-backs here from uh, one of these leagues because it makes sense to get chem where possible um, in these uh, you know, in these squad building challenges. Um, let me go goalkeeper. The next, the next remark was from Samuel Thomas. And uh, I'm going to read that in just a second, Samuel. Let me just get this... Uh, let me get this defence out. Have I got a right back here? No, we've got a left back, which we'll throw in. We've got another left back, which we'll throw in. Then we need a... Uh, oh, wait, wrong one. Boom. There we go. Left back. Then CDM. Then I can just do those uh, those randies going forwards. We'll throw him at left wing. We'll go back to the right mid. We'll put the centre back at right mid because I'm banterous like that. Um... Cam goes in, striker goes in, striker goes in. That should be 50 chemistry easy. Right. He says, hey, Nep, my name's Sam. What up, Sam? He says, you're a mad YouTuber and I love your videos. I appreciate that. It says, you ramble on a lot, but the things you say are logical and help us understand the game better. And I appreciate that as well. He says, congratulations on almost 160,000 subs, which is amazing on this channel. It really is. I wish more people were into Road to Glories. You and me both. He says, can you please show us chemistry styles that you apply to your players and why? Anyway, nice video. Please feature me in a video. Well, this is you being featured in a video, dude. And um, I've explained like quite a few times the specific chem styles I use and why. But I'll do next week for the for one of the squad building challenge for one of the foot champions daily knockout tournaments that I build a squad for. I will build a team and I will explain what what uh, chem styles I put on and why. Hopefully, in a detail that doesn't make the video unbelievably long but does give a good uh, account of what chem styles I use and why, basically. So yeah, I could, uh, I could do that absolutely no problem, my bro. Um, let me get this guy in left midfield. I just, I just want to make sure we get the easy chem here, you know, without, uh, without screwing up. So uh, yeah, there's, there's that. And that, that, fortunately, for those of you that hate chem talk, is the end of the chemistry uh, discussions. Now, I've got two Sydney players here. Did I have a third Sydney player? He's gold, right? Good to know. Um, I will throw in these uh, non-Sydney players because they're not really worth anything to me. Uh, we'll throw him in there. We'll throw him in there. And we'll throw him... Wait, did I just... No, I didn't even press the button. I didn't even press the button. We'll throw him in there. And that requires two strikers from the Kaylee. Come on, give me two silver strikers. We got one striker. That'll do us. Um, boom, and we'll throw him up top. That's got to be fit. Oh, God. We do that. And then that. And then that. That doesn't work. I guess it's the 47. That should work. Oh, no, wait. Is there any way? Is there any? Is there any way to do this? I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get these specific players to 100 chemistry. Sorry, 50 chemistry. I don't need 100. 
Um, let's put those guys up there. Centre back, striker, and centre back makes sense. CDM, centre back, left wing. This guy's left wing. Okay, so I can only go up to 41. So we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to be a bit more creative with this. What was the next league that we were at? Do we have any more K League players? We do. Right, let's get these K League players in, and we'll just fill up the K Leagues, and uh, we'll go from there. So we'll throw him in there. And swap those two bad boys around, and that's 55. It only took us one extra player. Ha Wait, what? We don't have a guy in goal. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? Uh, there we go. Happy days. Um, Enzo Hernandez says, Rate Nepenthes FIFA knowledge, the most on YouTube, to be fair. I do appreciate that. He says, It would be so down for you to do a podcast or something. Well, this, this kind of like goes into link with the show. Uh, you know, myself, Bates, and Simon, and AI Skills started the show. Um, some months ago when I started this channel, literally like six months ago, and the idea was to have it up every sort of two to three, maybe four weeks. Um, what happens is there's a lot of us, obviously between the four of us, we have different time schedules because Nick's, Nick's basically West Coast, Nick's eight hours behind, AA is five hours behind, um, and uh, myself and Simon are on the, you know, the, the schedules that we're on. Um, it, it kind of got a little bit difficult. Sorry, not Nick. Why am I saying Nick? Bateson. Myself, Bateson and Simon are on the same time zone. A9 skills is a, a little bit behind. And then when I was looking to get Nick in, because I wanted Nick to fill in for when people couldn't come, Nick being eight hours behind was also problematic. Um, so some, like, I love podcasts. I love listening to podcasts. I love creating podcasts. You know, I feel like it's, it's a strong point for me personally. Um, because of the fact that I can, let me just make sure I didn't have that uh, that guy in there. Um, because I because I can talk a lot and I, and I do have a lot to say and I have a lot of opinions on a lot of different things. So in the back, you know, with that in mind, uh, how many packs have we got? Let's have a look. It'd be interesting to see now. Thirteen already. That's crazy. What's that going to be? That's going to be like forty gold players, which is going to be at least three gold packs. That's awesome. Um, uh, hopefully, hopefully. Um, once I get uh, moved, because I'll be moving in around four weeks, we've got uh, an exchange date. As long as everything goes well going forwards, we should be in uh, you know good shape. Um, once I move, and uh, once I get my uh, you know my problems that I've got going on right now behind me, hopefully I'll be able to bring that back, and we'll be able to get some more podcasts going. Um, but ultimately, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect it to be super quick. You know, I wouldn't expect it to be like in the next few weeks more in the next few months but i will definitely be getting the uh the podcast back for you guys because i know you guys loved it i love being involved in it and um it was one of the main reasons why i started this second channel which has now just turned into a road to glory channel which is crazy um so uh yeah there's that next is from bush league and i'm going to read this one off again he says i don't know about you guys but i don't play fuck until team of the year player prices are retarded until then like storage is over 50k he's like that every game and eventually goes down to barely 10k so i just bronze pack like crazy and generate a huge amount of coins for when i join the game um i don't necessarily agree with your methods or, or your your thought process because what happens is i, I do understand that it's expensive right now for players like storage but that's because right now Sturridge is one of the elite players in the game. He is an elite striker. There aren't many better alternatives, if if at all, for the you know for the BPL. Um, so, who are you going to get instead of Sturridge? You can easily get like a cheaper replacement, like a, a Danny Welbeck or a Danny Ings. Um, you know there are plenty of people out there that you can get instead of Sturridge, but um, ultimately. What you get with Sturridge is a world-class striker at this this point. Now, yes, he is a lot of coins now, and he won't be that many coins come Team of the Year. He won't be that many coins come Black Friday. I think Black Friday is the first real market crash, you know, which is actually due in the next sort of four or five weeks, I believe. Um, but what happens is, is the reason why Team of the Year, Danny Sturridge, is worth a fraction of what he's worth right now is because there are now considerably better players than him. And I don't just mean because of Team of the Year, but I also mean because of the number of special cards that have been released in that time frame. Um, I, I, these are all untradeable, so I'm actually, I am going to use these MLS players because they're untradeable to me. So I've already completed the plan. No point having them in there. Might as well get, get rid of them. Um, so yeah, what, what happens is, is right now there is no better version of Daniel Sturridge himself. Right, so Daniel Sturridge is priority number one for Daniel Sturridge. 
By the time Team of the Year comes around, he could have two or three informs. He could have a squad building challenge card. He could have a hero card. He could have an international man of the match card. He could have so many different variants of himself that it devalues the current best version. And of course, one of the main reasons for deflation is the more the game goes on, the more players actually just play the game, which means there's more coins in the game, which more packs open, prices dry, driven down, you know? Um, and, and also, again, like, you know, it goes to the point where, like, what you get is you get people that used to rely on Daniel Sturridge for, for their guy who now have moved on because they've gained more coins to Sergio Aguero or to, um, you know, a different league or, or a, a, a player like... Um, a better version of I don't know who's who's in the BPL that's a good like Lukaku like an 87 rate Lukaku so they've moved on from that Dar Daniel Sturridge and they don't require him anymore um, so it's, it's not such cut and dry in my opinion as oh I don't want to play because they're just too expensive now because what you get now for your money is the same as what you're going to get then for your money. Right now you pay 50k for Sturridge because he's that much better than the current players available then you're going to pay 10k for storage because there's so many better players for 50k that are that much better than him that puts him at the current level of what Danny Welbeck is. I'm not saying Sturridge and Welbeck are the same player, but like right now Welbeck is here and Sturridge is here and their value reflects that. Well, when Team of the Year comes around, Welbeck's even way further down, Sturridge is still here, Welbeck's way down here, but now there's new players up here which pushes his player price down. And then as the year goes on, it's going to push it down even more and there's going to be a new bracket of players. So what you're going to end up, what you're doing basically is saying, I don't like playing until there are special cards in the game so that the gold cards have less value so that I can afford them. But there are alternative players for affordable prices that you can use. So on that note, I don't necessarily agree with your process of not playing until you can afford A, B or C because... There, there are now better players out there for the same value that you wasn't willing to pay for just a gold player. If that makes any sense at all. It probably doesn't. I've probably just blown the mind of absolutely everyone. Which if I have done, I apologise. It's too late to apologise. What have we got here? Left back, centre back, centre back, cam, left wing. Let's go with left wing in there. Um, so yeah, there's, there's that. Next up. Christian Hentz said, Nep, have, you have great videos. Well, thank you very much. But could you bring back FIFA Mobile, please? Yes, dude. I've, I've been, I didn't stop playing FIFA Mobile at all throughout the time that I haven't uploaded it. Um, I just, the, the amount of time it takes me to make the FIFA Mobile videos and considering how much I was playing, um, you know, considering how much I was playing uh, FIFA 17 because it came out and it came out unexpectedly early for me as well. Um, I, I basically just don't have time to make the videos. I'm playing it a lot right now. Like I'm, I've kind of got into a good routine, a good rhythm with my FIFA 17 stuff. So there will be videos back on FIFA Mobile. I would say by the middle of next week, Tuesday or Wednesday next week, you'll be looking at some more FIFA Mobile videos from myself. Um, so as long as you can, uh, as long as you're happy to wait until at least that long, um, that would be great. So thank you very much. Um, and that's that's all there was to that question, really. Next comment that I picked up was Jason Kellett. He says, uh, are you English, Neb? Your accent is so unique. Well, yeah, I am English, yeah. Um, I, I, I get told quite a lot. Let's see how many packs we've got now as well. 19, yes, that's 60 players, boys. That's 60 players. And we've still got at least one or two more silver packs to make up here. Um, I grew up in, like, uh, a really bad area like I grew up in if you guys know where New Addington is in Croydon is I am from New Addington which is a very much um it's it's like a rough area is it's very rural it's very like uh you know the, the people from New Addington and, and no discredit to them uh, you know everyone makes of their life the the best of the best that they can and the best that they know how but the people from New Addington don't ever really amount to much they're very much uh people that stay in New Addington um they quite often, you know, live on benefits. And, and, and this is not everyone. And, and if, if anyone that's watching is from New Addington is doing good for themselves, not like, you know, I'm, I'm stereotyping here. I'm not picking on the individuals that have gone above and beyond. I'm saying stereotypically, the people from the area that I grew up are 
um, not very well educated. They're, you know, they they don't really amount to much, and that's that's just the sad truth of the matter. Uh, myself, I was fortunate enough that my dad uh, had and still has pubs in central London, of which I would run. Um, I would work in. I would go up, uh, you know, work for my dad quite a lot when I was a young boy, and it got me out of my my you know my area, my my ends essentially. Um, so my accent became a mix of South London and very posh central London. And what you're left with is what I've got, which isn't, I, I have like what I would consider a non-accent. I don't even have an accent. Um, I, I feel like I have, like if you said, where are you from? I, I don't know what, where you're from. What, I don't, I, if I then said I'm from London, you would probably gear more towards North London than South London um, just because of the way I speak. So uh, I don't think my accent is unique, but um, definitely, it's not a, I guess, it, I guess it is unique in that sense because it's kind of like a posh chavy accent, isn't it? Um, I could, I could speak like I was from the ghetto, but I don't. Right, we've got 20 of these three player packs to open. It would be nice to get a special card in one of these. I don't know if there are any or many informs. I don't know if there are any screamers that are able, actually, let me go and take a look at the screamers. We'll take a look. Oh, wow. Russians. I, I like it when we get the players that are going to link well together. No, we won't take a look at the screamers. We'll just wait and see if we get one. We'll move on to the next uh, the next comment, which is from X2 Gaming. It says, do you find it easier to play foot champs when you have no background noise? Um, some nice players there. Uh, example, streams, Discord, etc. Or do you play better when you're in a call with other people or listening to, to streams, etc.? Love the series ever since it began. Uh, last FIFA, keep up, Nepo. Well, thank you for the continued support, dude. I do appreciate it. And, I, I don't really know um, to, to answer your question. I, I, don't, I don't know what I find easier. Sometimes, like, it, it's like quite a lot of the times, if I get up and no one else I talk to on a daily basis is awake or around, um, I'll just watch a stream or listen to, to music whilst I'm playing. Um, if they're around, I'll sit in calls. I, have, I win games and lose games in both scenarios. Um, I, I don't think there is a specific thing or way for me to play better. Uh, I, I think a lot of it is like is is mental and, and it's all down to you and how you but like if you tell yourself I play better when I listen to music, you will play better when you listen to music because you've told yourself that. Um, so if you tell yourself I play better when I'm talking to my friends, then you you can condition yourself to to think the same thing. Uh, that guy we just got by the way, Perez Remember him last year? He was a guy that I used so much last year and I just don't use him this year, but his card is fantastic. Medium height, 5'10 is a bit mere, but he's defending physical passing and dribbling for a, a, like a defensive-minded CDM, a great, with good pace and shooting. If you put like an anchor on him, he would be a sensational midfielder. So uh, might have to look into using him in a team just to see how he goes. Hopefully we get at least one special card out of these. Uh, Keon Boss uh, says, um, oh no, don't give me duplicates already, game. Come on now. Says the Panthers, I just want to say thank you. I'm 11 and during his FIFA 16, I was not a good player. However, decided by FIFA 17 and your second channel has really helped me. You don't talk nonsense and you don't rely on lots of money. You probably won't read this, but if you do, I just want to say thanks and keep up the good work. Well, I did read it, dude. And um, uh, I thank you for your support and, and for being... 11 years old and being able to tolerate and understand me. That can't be easy because I'm an idiot. So uh, good luck with your FIFA 17 journey. Hopefully you are more successful than me. Uh, there's only two um, comments left, which is quite fitting for time because we're gonna finish off these packs here, build the main packs, and then hopefully have a field day opening them. The first one says, uh, Yusuf Aku says, I dominate divisions and I'm in division three without spending a penny, but I can't win foot champions qualifying. Um, this literally comes back to a point I just mentioned. It is genuinely all in your head. I personally believe foot champions qualifying is ridiculously easy. Um, I haven't struggled. I think I've qualified on first try every single time. Um, I also believe that last week I won one of the tournaments two or three times on this account so that we could get the reward more times. Um, I find I'm in personally in Division Three, and I find that not to be too difficult. Um, I, I think you, it's. I, I think what what's happening is there's so much pressure on people to qualify because they're like, okay, I've only got four attempts, you know, today. 
If I fail this, I'm, I'm now another day closer to not qualifying where I've got another time sensitive uh, squad builder to build and play and qualify. And it, like, I think the pressure just gets to a lot of people where if you just sit there and play casually, play like it's your Division 10 games, just sit there and play the game and just be like, hey, if I win, I win. If I don't, hey, I'll try again next time. I'll try again tomorrow. I think you'll do a lot better if you relieve yourself of that pressure. And that's coming from someone who absolutely buckles under pressure all the damn time. You, you'll see me win three or four games in a row on Foot Champions and then I'll lose like two or three in a row. Not necessarily because my opponents are better than me, but because I sit there and think, oh my God, I've won like four in a row. This has got to end. Like, I can't, surely I can't... Uh, you know, surely I can't continue this form on. I'm not that good of a player. There's no way I'll get 30 or 40 wins this week. Ah, oh, it's too much pressure. I'm going to leave. And then I end up screwing myself over, which is just idiotic. So I would say to you, Yusuf, just when you go into your foot champions games, remember, everyone's in the same boat as you, man. Everyone's struggling to qualify. Everyone's panicking. Everyone's desperate to get into that foot champions weekend to get those awesome prizes. Um, and as long as you stay true to your game plan and uh, understand where you are and who you are as a FIFA player, you'll, you'll win games way more comfortably th than, than you thought you knew how. And the last message that I put up, which is a very good time to f finish off reading the messages because we're here now. Um, ooh, nice. That Amavi is a duplicate as well. It says, uh, iStealification says, other FIFA YouTubers that have subscribed have shit gameplay and they're below average, but edit out their shitness to show they're good. And I found this to be a funny comment because that's, that's not necessarily just... Uh, fee for people and it's not just necessarily YouTube. It, it's 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 social media in general What you will find on social media is people will only show you the good things Whether it be your friends and family on Facebook whether it be the person that you follow on Instagram or Twitter You only see the good positive things from these people because it gives the illusion of a, a, a fun life and and more people prefer to have someone think that they have an enjoyable life than actually have an enjoyable life, which I find to be sad. Um, you know, I, I share positive and negative things on my channels, on my social media, on everything I can. Um, and I wouldn't have it any other way. And uh, I think people that only are willing to show you the positive sides are people that are, are trying to hide the negatives. So, um, that, and that's just life and stuff, you know. So in terms of YouTubers, it wouldn't benefit business-wise a YouTuber to, to show them getting tanked game after game after game. It just wouldn't be beneficial, um, which is why I think people don't do it. Um, on, and on the same note, I've found a lot this year, specifically because of Foot Champions, that showing the bad and watching the bad and analysing the bad has in turn made me a better player you know the the amount of stuff that i watched of myself over the last few days where well over the last few weeks sorry are these tradable or untradable i don't know if these are tradable or not guys don't wanna i don't know if i want to get rid of french league players um we'll risk it we'll risk it anyway screw it they, they can't be much see that, that well i'm gonna have to check if these are tradable or not because i don't want to give up like, if this dude here is worth, like, 1,000... Yeah, okay, they're untradeable. Brilliant. Say, say, that saves me a whole bunch of problems. Let me just make sure they're all untradeable. Okay, that's frustrating, isn't it? Um, all right, he is untradeable. He's untradeable. He's untradeable. He is tradable. Let's have a look how much he goes for. If he goes for more than, like, five or 600 coins, I might sell him. Okay, he doesn't. Brilliant. Um, he probably is untradeable anyway. This guy is untradeable. This guy, untradeable. This guy, untradeable. Was it really just one tradable player? Get out of here, game. Come on. Um, yeah, so for me personally, seeing the bad has made me a much better player. Over the last few weeks, I feel like I've grown as a FIFA player more than at any other stage in my, uh, you know, in, in my FIFA career, I guess. So um, I'm happy. I'm happy that uh, that's the case. And, and I think a lot of people just are so scared of, of how people react and what people say you know can you imagine if you as a youtuber and regardless of whether you're entertaining or not if somebody just looked at your gameplay and judged you just off of your gameplay in that instance because you guys can be harsh sometimes and i don't necessarily mean you watching like, i'm sure you're like genuinely a nice person but the viewers can be really really erratic towards the people that they follow that they subscribe to and that they show support for there are times where you know you'll see video comments of 
people getting absolutely abused and harassed because of one mistake here or one mistake there or a little bit of bad gameplay here or a little bit of bad gameplay there. And you, I just sit there and think that is just totally uncalled for and totally unnecessary. And it kind of makes me think and understand, yeah, you know, maybe I can see why you wouldn't want to show this gameplay or that gameplay because you're going to get ridiculed for it and nobody wants to get ridiculed for their gameplay. Um, so, you know, it might just be easier to not show that gameplay. And that's... Uh, that's unfortunately the, the sad truth behind it. But um, I wouldn't really look too much into somebody else and, and how they act and uh, what they do. Um, am I really not going to be able to get... There's got to be a way to get 100 chemistry out of this. Oh, sorry, 70 chemistry because these players are just too close. Boom, there we go. Yes! Squad building genius, come on. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I do it myself as well. What you would have seen a lot, like, with the best team in FIFA series last year on YouTube that I had, if if I had a team that wasn't good, I wouldn't even upload the video because it's, you know, it's called the best team in FIFA. So if I'm playing really, really badly with it, it's obviously not the best team in FIFA. Thus, I don't want to show it to you. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I leave everyone's uh, opinions to themselves on the, on that matter because uh, I think yes some people probably uh, probably go out of their way to make themselves look a little bit better than they actually are are um, some people probably do it because they don't want the uh, the the kind of kickback of, of hate that they get for not being a pro at the video game um, some people I'm sure uh, just find it more rewarding to show good gameplay compared to bad gameplay. Um, some people might be just proud of their achievements, you know, some people might be like really bad at FIFA and so they win three or four games, they show those three or four wins and they might be really proud and be like, hey, like, look at what I did, you know, like YouTube, YouTube's a place for people to express themselves how they see fit and to, to say to someone, you know, you're, you're, you're below average or you're bad or you're this or you're that, which is why you edit your videos such and such way, is the same as saying to an actor oh, why didn't that cutscene, you know, why didn't that blooper make it into the main film? Why would it make it into the main film? You want to show the best of you. You want to give people a good account of yourself. And uh, fortunately, you you know, as a YouTuber, you have a platform to do just that. Um, oh, look at that. Look at that Mario Gaspar. What a, what a hero. He's gonna, he's, we're going to have the blue version of him eventually. Yeah, you, you know, you, you, have, you have a platform where you can do just that. Give a good account of yourself. Give the best account of yourself without people having to see all the crap that you went through to get to that point. So I don't think there's necessarily a problem with it. I've done it myself. Other people have done it. Other people will continue to do it. Um, I don't necessarily think it's an issue. But that is the end of the comments that I brought up there, guys. And it's going to leave us in a position where we are... Uh, we are we are one. No, we are in a position now. Come on, tell me I can get... Yes, look at that squad building champion. I we might have way. I, I've I've used some of the non rares that, or sorry, the commons. I've used some of the commons that I was going to keep just because I got I got carried away. I didn't even realise if I was, I forgot what I was doing for a second, and I forgot that I wasn't getting rid of con, um, tradables. I was only getting rid of untradables. So we're in a position now where I feel like I might have got rid of some. Where was I? Have I already done all of this? No. Um, yeah, I'm in a position now where I think I've got rid of some things that I would like to have kept, which is uh, sad. But did I? I'm sure I was at a league where I had a goalkeeper and something else left. Da, 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 da. I'm gonna have to check them all again now, just because I don't. I don't want to miss out like one player and then at the end of it be like, oh, there's one player spare that I could have used. Um, but at the same time. You know, we're 45 minutes in. We're getting to that finishing point, though, guys. So for those of you that have sat through, watched, and listened, I'm not. I'm not using Bobo, even though he's actually really, really cheap now. I'm still not using him. Um, yeah, for those of you that stuck around and listened for the for the 45 minutes that I've already been recording, or 44 minutes that I've already been recording, we are getting close. We are we are drawing to a close now. All of these players, they have to stay. Look at all these Liga Nos boys. Oh, yeah. Um, any Japanese? No, MLS I can get rid of. Um, well, Kaka, they are untradeable, actually. So, um, yeah, we'll get rid of... Uh, oh, no, wait. Kaka and... Uh, 
what's his face might be tradable I'll keep them if they're tradable because they'll have a little bit more value um, let's get rid of left mid and centre mid oh no we don't need to get rid of left mid and centre mid Tim Howard is not valuable Kaka may well be alright I can't be bothered screw it screw it guys screw it we're just going to do this oh look at that boom squad building champion because the reason why I say screw it for the I could have discarded Kaka and Howard for 1200 coins I could have sold them um, for about 2000 coins between them but I know that the pack that they got me is going to contain someone that's going to be unbelievably valuable to me. I just have a feeling I'm due something huge out of one of these uh, one of these packs, you know. So I have a feeling it's coming uh, very very soon. I don't know why. I just I just I've seen Castro today open two like he opened 25 two player packs, and of those 25 two player packs, he managed to pick up. Um, I'm going to keep all the Russians because for squad building challenges, they're really bloody helpful. Goalkeeper, right back, left back, centre back, centre back. We'll get the CDM in, and we'll get we'll get Tosic in as well, actually, because uh, I'll, I will take a look at how much Tosic sells for. Um, but yeah, Castro got two of the spoo uh, the screamer cards from uh, from his uh, his time. So um, I'm hoping with however many we've picked up, we should be able to. Uh, what is he? Oh, well, it doesn't even sell for 650. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll submit him as well. I'm hoping... I, I think we've got about seven or eight of these. I think we're done as well. I don't think I've got enough gold cards to get um, to get another one in there without using some relative players. But uh, where were we? We was at SPL, Russian, South African, Irish, Turkish, Norwegian, Ukrainian League, and then uh, the Australia, Austrian League. So, yeah, we're left with that one dude. So, we have... How many do we have? How many did I get? We have seven. Yeah. So we're going to get 14 rare players here. I would be happy from seven with... I would I would be elated with any special card. But one big flare would be nice. Not necessarily a walkout. Just an 84 rated plus would be absolutely fantastic. Oh, I hate this. I hate when this happens because you don't get to see any flare. You don't get to see any walkout. You don't know what it is. And it is. Phil Jagielka is not bad to get, to be honest. He's pretty good. We'll send him into the trade pile. I'm going to quickly back out of ultimate team and then go back in because I think that's what's causing uh, causing the issue of the pack. So we're going to back up. By the way, guys, bronze pack method now has two huge players in there for you to get. Maybe three, but Akin Fenwa and Emre Moore are both screamer cards. So I'm going to be doing, uh, you know, investing my time. What time is it now? Almost 11. So foot champion starts in two hours. I don't, know, I don't know if I've got enough time to do it tonight, but I will be doing some bronze pack method. Hopefully, getting ourselves some of those uh, some of those players. And our two player pack here, no screamer, no special card. It is going to be, it is going to be Areola. That's not a bad player to get actually, because I have a feeling a marquee matchup for PSG and Marseille is coming soon, which means he will actually be quite useful to us. Now, five of these packs remain. Come on, here, hook us up. That's not a big flare. But we could still get some good players in it. There's nothing. Oh, actually, Kuyate, not bad at all. I, I used him in draft and he was good. I've, I've slammed Kuyate for his uh, uh, like inability to pass the ball with that 61 passing. But when I used him in foot draft, he was very, very, uh, very viable as a player to be used. Next pack we get. Come on, EA. No flare again. No big flare. We're going to get ourselves morales not a bad card if he's got four star skill moves it'll give him a little bit more stock value oh enna valencia four star weak foot but enna valencia is not a bad shout as well um 76 rated he's, he's so close to a silver isn't he it's a, it's a shame that he hasn't got a little bit better stats but next pack no flare again ea saving the best till last we're gonna get ourselves jermaine defoe this is the second time we've got him as an untradeable i think i used him in a squad building challenge the first time i got him i did indeed we also get zubia from russia with love so Jermaine Defoe goes into the bank. Two to go. EA, I beg you. Screamer or better. Come on, we're going to have one left. I haven't had much luck with these. We get Thomas Vermaelen. I haven't had that much luck with these. I see everyone else get so lucky. Those two players are terrible. I see everyone else get so lucky. But for us, it doesn't seem to be the case. This is our final pack. EA, what have you got for me? Not a big flare. It is going to be... Oh my god, it is Jeremy... Now, as an 83, we could still have like a Jamie Vardy or a Kante or something in here, which would be really good. What do we get? Edair. Now, actually, Edair is not bad. I like his card. 
Four star, three star, not ideal, but he's got a very good card. Good pace, good dribbling, good shooting. That's not bad. We didn't get exactly what I wanted out of that. We didn't even get a semi-decent player. I was really hoping that would be our chance to, to pull up something big. Um, but unfortunately not. Now, I'm going to now go and have to build my squad for foot champions. I don't know if I want to play with this squad. Like this, There's nothing wrong with this team. Um, I will be putting Son and Sterling up front instead of uh, Hunter and Welbeck, of course. Um, which is uh, which is good. So like this team in itself, who even would I improve? I mean, I would want a different right back. Um, which would require me getting a different centre back. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with this team. But this team is good enough. The strikers are great. Cam and Cent C CDM are great. The problem I have with this team mainly is Oxley, Chamberlain and Walcott. So I might go and invest in a better left mid and right mid. Or I might not. I might play 10 games and see how I get on. And if I win 7 of the 10, maybe I'm happy. If I only win 5 of the 10, maybe I change it up. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But this, guys, is going to be the end of the video. If you did enjoy this, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.